Hi, welcome back to Country Cow Designs. I'm Adam. I'm Jo. And we make sewing patterns for bag makers. And we're really happy to introduce to you the industrial totes. So this is very different to what we usually do, isn't it, Jo? It is very different. It's, um, it's an unlined tote. So Which, not everyone's going to like this, are they? Yeah, it isn't going to be for everyone. No. Yeah. So when I started sewing bags, particularly with my sail right machine, I really wanted to actually start making bags like this. This was kind of like my, my dream bag that I wanted to make. A proper sturdy tote made from leather. I'm not fast about the lining, personally, that's why it hasn't got one. So, as the name says, the industrial tote, this is specifically made for an industrial machine, isn't it? So your, like your Janome HD9 wouldn't really do this, would it? Not, no. This is for leather. There's absolutely no stabilizers whatsoever. No. So it's got to be thick, yeah. sturdy leather, and you're not going to make it through without an industrial sewing machine. Yeah, absolutely. And even then, you'll notice throughout the instructions, I do make references where you may want to remove certain seams or uh, sky of the leather, which is where you thin the leather to try and make it more manageable for a machine. Because even with an industrial machine, there is limits to what they can manage, depending on what leather you're working with. So it's a nice big chunky tote, isn't it, Joe? It is, and it has a zip top closure. So yeah. Yeah, zip top closure, zip Lots pocket of on the front, slip pockets on the back and then there's two styles of slip pockets on the inside as well. Now I should say as these pockets are all just sort of sewn on with no lining you can have this with no pockets if you wanted to. It's entirely up to you. You can even not have the zip top if you wanted to but I think it's nice to have all the features um, if you're going to use it. Now pay attention as I mentioned in the preparation to what leather you want to use uh, choices as if to you want to have a, a raw seam particularly on the base panel so this is the base panel here now this is an example of one that hasn't got a folded top stitch seam it's just a raw edge which with leather is perfectly fine uh, this is the same this is a raw edge but this one that's got a folded top stitch edge which is possible with slightly thinner leather so it's in the instructions, but just be aware there are certain options you need to decide before you start actually cutting the leather out. Don't make mistakes. Leather's not cheap, so you want to get it right first time. And we have some amazing bags made by the pattern testers. Mm. So um, check those out. There'll be a blog post on our website, which will have all of the pattern tester photos so you can get inspired. So if you want to sew along with Adam, you can grab the pattern from countrycowdesigns.com or otherwise you can just join us and watch along as he makes it. Yep, I will be sewing on my Sail Right Fabricator. It's a heavy industrial uh, sewing machine, which is perfect for this. So hopefully you've got something along the same sort of style machine to sew with this. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Any questions, stick them in the comments below. I'll try and answer as much as I can. And of course, there'll be a bunch of links to materials, tools, all that sort of stuff. So we'll get started. Step one is preparation. So you see here, I've got all the panels from a bag cut out. It's really important that you are aware of the leather that you're working with uh, and how you're going to treat it uh, and things like that. So for example, for the base panel and for the pockets and the zip panel, I'm using this really nice veg tan leather. Now this is 1.4 millimeters thick, which is about three and a five ounces. That is about as thin as you're ever going to want to get with any leather on this bag. So I've chosen this sort of weight of leather. It's a little bit easier to work with. It also means later on you'll see that I'm actually able to have a sort of top stitch seam, which is a nice look. Now if you're going, if you're using thicker leather, say two mil, about five ounces, you may want to consider removing half an inch off either side. That is prompted in the instructions. That would basically leave a raw edge on the base panel of your bag, which will look absolutely fine, especially if you've got a veg tan leather. It'll make it a lot easier for your machine to get through. In fact, if you're using two mil leather for your whole bag and you left a top 
seam to stitch here, you'd find that you might actually not be able to get through uh, these sides of the bag where you end up having like four layers of leather. So make sure you're aware of the leather. But as I said, I'm working with a leather that's 1.4 millimeters thick. That means I can actually have the folded top seam. So I'm gonna leave that in place. In the instructions, referring to the cutting chart, it's all squares, so that makes it really super easy, especially if you want to avoid uh, printing off all the paper pattern pieces. The only thing you'll have to do is cut the notches out for the box corners. Measurements are in the patterns though, so don't worry. And also you would have to remove the zip opening for the zip pocket. Again, uh, you'll see that in the instructions there. Everything else though is simple squares, really easy to cut. Uh, which is a nice bonus for this bag. You're going to need two lengths of zip tape, two zip pulls as well, and you're going to need some leather for your grab handles, for the handles for the bag. Now I like to work with a really thick veg tan leather. This is about 3.5 millimeters thick. Really nice to hold. If you haven't got anything that thick, you could use uh, long strips of the leather you currently have and just glue and sew it together uh, you'll get about the same thickness but I like to work with this which makes it nice and easy. I'll also be using rivets in the course of this bag. I will be using traditional copper rivets. Now you may not be familiar with those um, and I won't go into depth in how to do it in this video but we are doing another video to show different ways of doing rivets, which will include doing traditional copper rivets, which are my favorite and I think they work really well with leather. Once you've got the whole bag cut out, you may want to consider if you want to treat the edges of the leather where there's gonna be a raw edge exposed. So panels like the pockets, the zip opening, uh, the, internal, uh, the internal pockets, they're going to have raw edges. Now, what you can do with leather, you can basically chamfer the edges, which puts a slight, just cuts off very time out of the corner. And then you can sand it smooth if you want to. You can burnish it with some burnishing gum or even just water. There's various ways. Now, you can leave it raw. I'm leaving these just raw leather for a slightly rusted look. But this is the stage where you want to decide if you want to do that. Now, I did do a video a little while ago about how to burnish the edges of leather when making straps. It's the same principle. So I'll link that below. But if you're happy with raw edges, absolutely fine. That's what I'm doing for this one. But this is the stage to make that decision. So now everything's cut out, I've got all my materials. We'll move on to step one. So you need your two zip panels, your longer piece of zip tape, you're not gonna need your zip pulls at this stage. So put them to one side, you won't need those to the very end of the bag and you'll see why later. So first thing we need to do is just mark the centers of each panel and your zip tape. Uh, you probably won't see that, but I've already done that. That's gonna make it a lot easier to line up as we're progressing with this. Now throughout this bag, I will make references to using uh, contact glue or double-sided tape or DST. Uh, I'll use DST for this stage because glue doesn't work on zip tape. But if I'm bonding two pieces of leather together like that, I would generally use um, a contact adhesive which works quite well with leather. But as I'm working with zip tape, I'm going to use my double-sided tape. So I'm going to place zip tape along the long edge of each zip panel. Try and get as close to the edge of the leather as I can without it showing later. So I'm just gonna do one side at a time, remove the, the cover for the double-sided tape, which is quite tricky. I usually have to have got some pointy like an awl, which I'm using here. Right, there we go. Now, to make it a bit easier to line this up along straight with the zip teeth, I'm actually going to use one of these guides. Now, these are fantastic. They're really good. 
So they just click on around the teeth of the zip tape and then you can just place the panel straight up to it and it will be parallel with the zip teeth um, of your zip tape. So that's a nice little trick. You can get these from leather shops, Etsy, things like that. They're only a couple of quid, but they're really handy. And then basically I can match this up. So my marks run underneath, but you'll see this actually holds on, this does. So I'm gonna match the centers of these two panels. Make sure it's right up against that plastic of the guide. Lovely jubbly, that's good. Right, I'm gonna do the same now with the other side. There we go. So that's all stuck down now with double-sided tape. Don't need this anymore, but yeah, a really handy tool for steps like this, and you'll see me use it again later. Now it's really important at this stage to make sure that these panels line up. Because later on, we're actually gonna separate this zip tape. So when you then come to redraw it later, you want these to be lining up. So now I'm gonna take it to the machine. We're gonna to top stitch along these two edges, uh, back stitching just at either end so keep it secure. And you wanna do this with an eighth of an inch allowance, seam allowance along both lengths of the zip panel. So throughout this tutorial, I'm using a Tex 90 polyester thread on my machine and I'm using a size 110 needle which is specifically designed for working with leather. So that's my zip panel complete. Now this is the scary bit, which everyone hates. We're now gonna separate the zip tape. So we're gonna put that together again later. We have to do this, otherwise it won't be possible to complete the bag later on. So this bit's now done. Take these to one side and we'll use them again later in the following steps. Step three is the front main panel and to start off with, we're gonna take one of our main panel pieces and this is the interior slip pocket. So turn the main panel wrong side up and we want to have our interior slip pocket just here. Now this is two inches up from the bottom of the panel centered in place. Just for convenience, I'm gonna just place this on using double-sided tape. And once I've done that, I'm gonna take it to my sewing machine and I'm gonna sew alongside the bottom and back up using a 1 8 seam allowance. So there we go. Get a close up of that. So that's our interior pockets sewn on now. Now, of course, it does mean you're gonna have exposed stitching on the outside. Oh, you're a bit too close now, aren't you? Don't worry, we're gonna cover that up in just a moment. So put that to one side. Now take your zip exterior pockets and the shorter of the two zip tapes. Now you are gonna to wanna to attach your zip pull on for this, otherwise we won't be able to do it later. So place your zip tape right side up. And what you wanna do, we wanna place the zip panel right over the center, so it's centered in place. Now the tool I used earlier, again, we can use this just to make sure it is centered in place. Although it's possible this one's a bit too long because it's just touching my zip pull. But again, if you had a shorter version, which you do get, it'd be great, but you can just make sure it all fits. So what I'm gonna do, I've already got my double-sided tape in place. I'm gonna stick this in place like that. And then I'm gonna take it to my sewing machine and I'm gonna sew around the whole box with a 1 8 seam allowance. So our zip is now sewed in place. And now what we need to do is bring back the main panel we had earlier. And we're going to place this 
on the right side of the leather. This is where we cover up this stitching and that's why the interior pocket is slightly smaller. Now we need to place this one half inches up from the bottom. Now I'm always a bit worried of marking this side of the leather just in case it can be shown. So just in case you can use a ruler just to place it on the side. Now again I'm going to use double sided tape to attach this for sewing. I'm doing it this time because glue doesn't tend to work with the finished side of leather, it doesn't want to bond to it. But I'm going to use double sided tape, Could put that in place one and a half inches up from the bottom of the panel and I'm going to sew all the way around again using a 1 8 seam allowance. I find that when I'm working with leather the stitching is even more important than perhaps when you're working with something like a canvas because it really stands out especially with top stitch. Now remember as you come towards a corner before you bring the needle down to the final uh, final stitch you can hand crank it while you're doing this just before the needle hits the leather use your knee lift on your machine to lift the foot up just place very slightly move the leather panel so the needle will come back into the leather on the dead corner of the seam allowance that you're working with and then you can carry on at the 90 degree or whatever turn you need to make. That way you're not sort of having to backtrack or cause any problems or have to remove stitching afterwards. So raise the foot with your knee lift just slightly, bring it back down and then you can carry again in the line that you want to. So now with the main panel the wrong side up, we need to look at start preparing to have the zip panel installed. But before you get to this though, you kind of have to make a decision really. Now you might just see here on camera this area here which is one inch wide has been sort of marked out and I've actually skived this area. Now skiving is when you take a tool such like this, there are other types that you can use and you use it to reduce the thickness of the leather by taking thin layers from the panel. The benefit of that is it means that when you come to top stitch or have multiple seams, you're reducing the bulk. So it's a really handy skill to have. So I've done that to this one inch layer, which means later on, when I come to top stitch, it's gonna be a lot easier to sew through and the leather will just sit better. Now I'm not gonna provide detailed instructions on how to skive, because frankly, I'm still perfecting it myself. But I will include links below to sh uh, from people who are far better at it than I am. But it is a skill worth learning, especially if you want to work with leather, and it does take time, you can't rush it. Um, but I've done that to this area, and then what I've also done, half an inch down from the top, I've used a tool like this. Now this actually cuts a groove through the leather. Now I've done that because it basically means when I come to fold this over the top stitch, I've got a nice cut groove to create a nice sharp uh, fold at the top of the panel. That's a really handy little tip. You don't have to do it, but it's worth doing. Now, of course, if you're working with leather that is thinner than what I'm working with, for example, say you maybe have something that's like 1.4 millimeters or three and a half ounces, you may not bother. You could just fold this over and be done with it. But because I'm working with something closer to two millimeters, it's worth me taking the time to remove the material to make it a little bit thinner. So with that said, I now need to attach the zip panel. So center point to a center point here, we want to place this half an inch from the top of the panel, which for myself actually marries up with the, the groove that I've already put in place. Now you want to put that in place, centered on the panel. Now I'm actually going to glue this with contact glue. One, because the wrong side to the wrong side of leather, it bonds really strongly. And because this is going to be the opening of the bag, over time it's going to get a bit of wear. It's kind of, it's going to get tugged on and things like that. So the glue is going to be stronger. So I'm going to glue that in place right now. Contact adhesive is, is really easy to work with actually. Let's you just put glue on either side. 
And then once it's dried for a little bit, like just a couple of minutes, as soon as you place items, the panels together, it will bond very strongly. So you see here, that's now stuck and it's very, very strong. And it's also nice to sew through because once it's all fully dried, it doesn't gum up your needle as much as say double-sided tape. So with that in place, we now need to fold over our top of the panel to create a nice folded top seam for the bag. Now again, depending on your, how thick your leather is, will depend on how hard this is. To make it easier, I like to use a seam roller. Now this is one designed for leather, so it's a really nice, heavy, uh, heavy metal one to work with. And I bring the top of the panel down to the one inch mark that we made earlier. And you just wanna just sort of roll it in place. Just try and get nice and tight. The groove I made earlier in the leather will be helping with this. And you'll see that it just starts forming it into place. So what I'm gonna do now, just to make sure this is nice and secure, I'm gonna glue under the edge here and I'm going to use ball door clips like this wrap it around the edge of the leather and then hold it in place. And I'll probably then set it aside just for say 10 minutes to let the glue fully go off. And that's gonna make sewing the panel so much easier. I'd recommend using board door clips, especially with a little bit of scrap leather around. If you're someone who uses uh, cotton a lot, you may use like a wonder clip. It's a sort of a name they're called, little plastic clips. They have little teeth on them which can damage the leather. So I recommend using board dog clips with a scrap bit of leather when you're working with a bag like this. So I'm gonna glue this in place, clip it down, and I'm gonna take it to the sewing machine and I'm gonna sew an eighth and a quarter inch seam allowance just because it looks nice with two rows of stitching. There you go. Now I'm really happy with that. Now, like me, you probably notice when you sew leather with a sewing machine, you can kind of get an imprint from the walking foot. Again, I just get a seam roller and I just roll it along the seam. It just helps to flatten out any marks, get a really nice finish. So there we go. Got a little bit of glue to remove there, but that'll be fine. But yeah. I'm well happy with that. I think that deserves a little zoom in on the top stitch. Yeah, it's my favorite part of leather is top stitching like that. Very nice. Okay, so the last thing to do with this panel is to punch four holes, which will later on be used for the grab handle. I'm using traditional copper rivets, so I'll be using a three mil hole. If you're using normal rivets, it's a double cap rivet, it would be like a two mil hole. As you do it though, please make sure you don't punch through your zip panel. So place out of the way, punch the four holes as mentioned in the pattern instructions, and then this panel will be done. Step four is the main back panel. So you wanna take your remaining main panel, and this is the exterior slip pockets. And now we want to fix it to the panel one and a half inches up from the bottom centered. I'm going to attach mine again using some double-sided tape. I'm going to attach it and then I'm going to sew with a, a 1 8 seam allowance down the side along the bottom and up the other side and this will be fixed in place. And there we have our exterior slip pocket sewn onto the panel of the bag. 
Now it's nice to consider to put two rivets in each corner just inside of the seam allowance. It'll just make it a bit more secure. It's also decorative as well. Uh, I am going to do that. Now I'm not going to show it in this video. I'm actually going to show me fitting these in a more detailed video of how to fit rivets that I mentioned earlier. That should be linked in the description up above. Uh, that video should have already come out before this tutorial. So I'm going to fit two rivets there and then we'll go on to complete the rest of this panel. Next we want to take our interior hanging slip pocket. It's a bit of a mouthful, isn't it? So flip it over so it's wrong side up. Now we want to mark two inches down just on the sides here. And we're going to fold up the panel up to those points. And we can just give it a little press. We can use our seam roller to get a nice finish on this again to create the seam like so. Now you can use double sided tape to secure this. Um, because we're working with two exposed raw edges of leather here, I'm going to glue this. It will just create a better finish. So I'm going to glue this with my contact adhesive. Once that's done, I'm going to take the machine and I'm going to sew down these edges here with a 1 8 seam allowance. So this is our interior hanging pocket all now sewn up. Now all you need to do now is make the four rivet holes which will later on line up with the grab handles and that's how we actually fix this inside the bag. So it does mean that now we put this to one side uh, after we've done the four holes of course. This goes to one side and we'll bring this back when we come to finish the bag later on. So we'll bring back the main panel and we'll fit the zip panel on top. So with our hanging slit pocket just kept to one side, we come now back to the main panel that we were working on. This is the one with the slit pocket. We get our zip panel. And again, we're gonna fix it centered just up here. Now, like in the other panel, I've already gone through and I've skived this area and I've just skived a bit deeper into the corners because that's where I can have multiple layers on my side seam. So like before, I'm just going to glue along these edges. I'm going to glue it in place half an inch down. So with that now glued in, like last time, I'm just going to make sure I get this crease in the top of the panel. I'm going to run a, a seam roller along the top here. And like before, I'm just going to glue as well underneath. And then I'm going to use my bald dog clips, clip it in place, let the glue just set for a few minutes and then take it to my machine. And so a 1 8 and a 1 quarter seam allowance along the top. There we go, that panel has been top stitched, which is lovely. Now, just like the other front panel, uh, we need to add four rivet holes in here. Again, all measurements are in the pattern, so punch four holes. Again, please have the zip panel out from underneath so you don't go through it. So, with that done, that now actually finishes step four, and we'll move on to the next step. Step five is the base panel. So we have our base panel here and you'll see that I've spared you watching me spread the glue. This is the interior base panel. I've glued this in place, centered to the ma this main panel. You could use tape, but because it's such a large piece and this adds, it's almost like a stabilizer for your base of your bag gluing it in place, it just adds more stiffness, just makes it stronger. So again, I've used contact glue for that. So now I'm gonna take it to the machine and I'm gonna sew all the way around with a 1 8 seam allowance.
there we have our interior base panel that's now sewn on. Again, if you have any issues with sort of presser marks from your machine, just give everything a good firm roll with a seam allowance on a hard base. So in the pattern, you'll notice there was the option to remove uh, the top seam allowance from the base panel. Now, as I discussed, that was especially important if you're working with thick leather. Now, because this is a slightly thinner leather, uh, I can actually get away with leaving this in place and I don't even have to skive this area either. So I will skive the corners just a little bit which will help to reduce the bulk on the sides of the bag when it overlaps with the top panels. But what I'm going to do now, I'm going to mark a one inch line along both sides. I'm then going to spread the glue across that one inch and I'm going to bring the top down to that one inch line, creating a nice seam, which we're gonna to top stitch. So there we have the top seams on our base panel all sewn up. So if you had decided your leather was too thick on, or it was, it was too thick and you didn't want to skive it as well, um, then your panel won't have the seam allowance on it that we've now just sewn on. That's important to know because if you haven't got these seams, you now need to mark a half inch line across the long side of the panel. I've already got that mark because it's where my leather's folded over. But if you haven't got this seam, then you're gonna to have to mark uh, the underside of the leather now. The reason because is that we're now gonna grab our panels that we made earlier. And we want to now attach these to our base panel. So we can do this in any order, but we'll start with the zip panel first because it's technically our front panel. So what we want to do is flip this over and we want to, there you go, zoom out for you guys. We want to place this edge alongside the edge of this leather here. So because we're working with the finished side of these leathers, the glue is not going to stick particularly well. So I recommend using double sided tape for this. So there we go. We've got our double side tape and I basically just matched it along the edge of the leather on this seam and now I want to match this edge along this edge. So take your time with this, you can't want to get it first time because if you've got to peel it off the tape can damage the finish of your leather. So that's now stuck in place, obviously it's not firmly stuck but it is now stuck enough for us to sew this seam. So now this is why we've got the gap. We're gonna sew a one eighth of an inch along this top edge here. The chances are this bag won't fit through your machine without rolling up one of the panels. So here we have our front panel is now attached to our base panel. And uh, I think that sewing there deserves a bit of a zoom in again. Yeah, there we go. Looking really nice. As you get an idea what the finished bag is going to look like, this is the uh, joys of working with leather in a, an industrial sewing machine. So now we have that side done. We now need to repeat the exact same process with the other side. So as last time, what we're going to do, I'm going to fit double sided tape along this edge and then going to match this edge with that panel and while it's secured with a double sided tape we're going to take it to the sewing machine and we're going to top stitch again with a 1 8 seam allowance this time along the top of the base panel and that will bring all the panels together ready for the next step. So that's all now sewn together. Uh, this panel is so big laid out, I can't actually fit it on the camera. <laughs> so 
Uh, but this is the important bit. You can see these are all sewn up now and that's looking really nice. Uh, again, just give these creases a little roll with a seam roller, just help flatten them out. You won't be able to do that later. So there. Now we're ready to move on to the final step, step six, which is final construction. So for the final construction, I've now got the bag, what is effectively wrong side out. And you'll see that they should match up all down the side. Now, nice little tip here that you'll find in the instructions, which I don't need to do for this bag because my base panel leather isn't too thick. But what you can do to make the box corners a bit easier later on, especially if you've got leather that's say two mil thick, just in the bottom corners here, you can effectively move the seam allowance. So you would just chop out a little half inch square. Uh, and that basically means when you come to the box corner later on, you're gonna have less layers to sew through, which is really, really handy when you come to do um, but when, when you're using heavier leather. As I said, this leather's about as thin as you dare go with this bag. Uh, so I'm not gonna bother. I can get away with it in this time, but just look for that in the pattern instructions, a little tip. And that's thankfully down to one of our testers who suggests that as a really nice, nice idea. But what we're gonna do now, we're gonna place these bags right sides together and we're gonna use, again, board dog clips and we're gonna clip all the way down both sides. As you do, try and make sure that the seams match up because when the bags turned right side out, that'll be a detail that will really stand out. So try and make try and get these to match top on the seams and the bottom uh, as you clip these together. So here we have our bag all clipped up, ready to go. So again, make sure it's all matching down the sides. So we're going to sew both sides. First of all, with a half inch seam allowance. So just take note of that, a half inch seam allowance. And then we're then gonna do a quarter inch seam allowance. So just, just having the two there will make it really strong on the sides. So there we have, all our sides are now sewn up with two seam allowances. I think it goes without saying, make sure you've top stitch well at the top, but we are gonna fit uh, rivets there in a bit, just to be extra sure. So now we move on to our box corners. So this is just like any other box corner you may have done on other bags. Basically you wanna try and get the fabrics or the material, sorry, the leather to meet together in a box shape. Now, of course, <laughs> depending on which leather you've been working with, that could be easier or harder. All I say is, is just do the best you can. It may not fit absolutely correct because it's gonna fight you a little bit. Some of the leather is sort of lost in the seams with the, the bulk of it, but just do the best you can to get a nice sharp, corner. So I always try and do the main one first in the center. I find it helpful to put some clips down the side which helps to hold the shape as you're sewing it. And then we'll put one here as well. And bring one down here. So that's all clipped together. You see now this seam has been folded over. It's fine for the thin leather that I'm using. As I said in the instructions, there's the little suggestion where you can sort of notch out the seam allowance on this corner here, which would prevent that being an issue. So a great tip if you are working with a thicker leather. I'm not gonna worry about it because I know this leather's fine because I've made a bag very similar to this already. So with that clipped up, I'm gonna take this to the machine and again, I'm gonna sew across here with a quarter and a half inch seam allowance back stitching nicely either end to make sure that the box corners are nice and secure for the tote bag.
So that's the sides all done. My box corners are done as well. So before you turn it out, just decide whether you want to put some rivets in these corners. I would recommend it. I think it's a nice feature. It means it's proper secure, um, but you know, it is an optional step. So I'm gonna uh, fit two uh, rivets here, again, using traditional copper rivets. So now I've fitted my rivets, we come to what it could potentially be the hardest part of this bag, and that is turning it out. Now, again, this will depend very much on the leather you're using. Uh, this is why I've gone for a base leather that isn't too thick, because it makes the box cores and everything easier to turn out. Um, and that's why I also have this second layer of fabric to begin to bring the strength back into the bottom if we are going for something a bit thinner. So I'm not gonna make you suffer and watch me turn this out. All I say is take your time. This will distress the leather. That's what happens when you turn leather bags out. I think it's a good finish personally, but take your time. If you are struggling, you could find like a stool or the back of a chair or something to sort of push down on to then force this up through. But I think if you take your time, it's all doable and just gradually work your way out, turn it through. But I won't make you watch me do this because I think it might take a while and you can rejoin me once it's all fully turned out. Right, that wasn't actually too bad actually, but there we go. There is my finish. Well, not finished yet, but it's been turned out. What's lovely about this um, waxy leather. It's Badalassi Carlo wax leather. Uh, oh, it's got such an amazing pull up. As you push into it, it just changes color. So when you turn it out, it just looks fantastic. So the bag's got a bit of patina now, which I'm really actually happy about. So now with that done, we now need to attach the leather straps, which would also include then as well, the hanging interior slip pocket. So to fit the grab handles and pocket, we're just gonna start with the easy part first and that's just fits the grab handle to the front panel. So if you look inside the bag, that's the one that's already got a slip pocket. So we'll you take your strap, which we punch holes into already, and this will pass through the holes in the bag. Now I recommend, making some little washes. Some little washes, there you go. That you just place around the back of the panel. That would just make it a bit more secure in the case that the, the handles get tugged really hard, it will just protect the leather itself. So I'm gonna pass those through. I'm gonna put the rivet post through. Pass them through the hole here. And then attach the grab. That's it, grab handle there. So do it this side, fit the rivets, and then bring it around and do the same to the other side. There we have it. That side is now done. So flip it over and we'll fit the strap to the other side. The difference here now is that we're gonna fit the slip pocket at the same time. So to fit everything to this side of the bag is a very similar process, but instead of using leather washes to protect the back, we've got the pocket itself, so that's okay. So we'll put it in inside the bag, make sure it's this way round, otherwise that'd be really inconvenient. And what we're gonna do we're gonna get two copper rivets, put it into the bag, the pocket that is, and then poke through the rivets. There they are. And put our strap on, attach it there. And again, we're now gonna set those rivets. So we're looking, it's looking pretty good in it. Yeah, I'm happy with this. So our last step now 
is to close off the zip and close off the ends for the zip tape. So first of all, we need to put our zip pulls back onto the zip tape. So we'll just attach them from either end. So we'll have two, I think. Of course, you can have one, up to you. But I think two just gives you some more options. As you put it on, make sure that you're getting it on straight. You'll know if it's done correctly because they should meet well in the middle, which thankfully they do. Okay, so we should now have our last two pieces of leather and these we're gonna wrap around either end of the zip tape. So we're just gonna wrap it around put it over the zip and we'll hold on with a, a ball clip at the moment. Do the same on the other side. Wrap it around the end. Now it may be you prefer to only have one tail to your zip and have the zip tape sort of turn 90s into the ends of the panel. You could do that, but obviously you're gonna have a raw end of a zip underneath this panel, which wouldn't be very tidy and could begin to fray. I do have um, an idea forming in my mind that would allow us to have the zip terminate in here so that it would open up fully wide. Uh, I think I'll probably release that as a blog post in the future. So if, if you would like to have that sort of pattern hack, as we call them, let me know in the comments and then we'll get that written up and we'll add it as a link to this description. But right now what we're gonna do I'm going to take this to the sewing machine. We're just going to sew a 1 8 seam allowance line across either end, and then the bag is done. So, this is the end result. So, Joe wasn't involved at all in this or making of the actual steps of the video. So, what's your opinion? Well, I've got to admit, when you first said green and brown, I was like, oh. <laughs> um, but it looks really cool now it's finished. Yeah, it's a really nice bag. It's massive. I mean, let's have a look. It's a proper tote, isn't it? Yeah. It's a I proper mean, all day bag. Bear in mind that I'm five foot 10, so I'm not small. And um, yeah, you can carry loads in this. It's beautiful. You could, even if you if you were smaller and you wanted it to come out smaller, you could just print it at like 90%, can you? Yeah, make the handles a little bit shorter. Yeah. It, but it's massive. It's really nice. It's, it's very luxurious in leather. Yeah. This is my favorite one of all the ones I've made with this leather, which is Badalassi Carlo Wax leather, which is probably my favorite leather at the moment, especially with the distressed patina it gives. It's beautiful. So um, yeah, I really hope you like this. As I said at the beginning, this is different to what we usually do. Um, so I won't be offended if this is not the bag you want to make, that's okay. But if you do want to make yeah. a full sewing pattern, fully lined fabric, everything like that, check out our Miyoko tote, because that's, yeah, that's, that's a good, a good option, one. isn't it? Yeah, that's a proper good size big tote, isn't it? So we've got lots of options. And we thought we'd throw this one in the mix for you guys. And if you have enjoyed this and you want some more leather uh, ones, we do have other leather patterns. Adam's No Sew Leather Patterns would be a great thing to look mm. at. So check them out on the website, countrycowdesigns.com. Yeah. Yeah. And as we said, we'll also go do a little video about how to fit different styles of rivets. That's probably already been released, but we'll link it in the description as well. So thanks so much for joining us for this uh, tutorial. Um, we've got other ones in the works, but nothing's actually complete as of yet, is it, to reveal to you guys? Not yet, but we've got lots of prototypes in the making, so we will see you very soon. Yeah, thanks for joining us. Bye.